In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the core game objects that a lot of Unity users are going to use, and that's called Create Empty. Create Empty is a game object that actually has nothing inside of it. However, this makes it a very powerful game object in that we can assign scripts and other components to it that we may not want the user to see. For this demonstration of its use, what I'm going to use it for is to generate an invisible wall collider. For example, you may find yourself in situations where you don't want the user to actually go and interact with something, but on the flip side, you don't want to build a terrain where you have to build giant mountains either. This is where the empty game component can come into play to help you as far as controlling where the user can go. So to begin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click and create empty. And I'm going to go ahead and call this invisible wall 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and bring it up into the environment here a little bit more. And if you take a look here, this is what the empty game object looks like. It's just that, an empty element. However, if we want it to actually be visible or to have some type of asset assigned to it, we can come in and assign components to it. And in this example, I'm going to go ahead and add a collider. Now to access your colliders, you're just going to click on add component. And if you start typing collider, you're going to see a bunch of different colliders pop up. Be careful whenever you're working. It depends on if you're working in 2D or 3D it will depend on the type of collider you want. Probably the one I use the most personally is the box collider. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And now, as you can see, my empty element is no longer empty per se, and what it has here is this green outline. That now allows me to go in and I can actually do just like any other object. I can resize, I can stretch, and move it around as far as its overall layout is concerned. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out a little bit here. I'm going to pull it down more so that it's sitting on the ground. And again, the main goal with this here isn't so much that the user can see it, but it's to keep the user from going places that I may not want them to go. So kind of stretch this out a little bit more here. And there we go. Now, when we preview our game or when the user interacts with our game environment, they're not going to be able to see this. A couple of other notes as far as working with colliders. Another way that you can actually work with them is over in their component editor. You can actually edit the collider itself by clicking on the points here to change the bounding volumes. And this will allow you to select the faces and edges if you want to get something a little bit more detailed versus just relying on all of your different uh, elements here as far as your move, your rotate, and your scale. However, you just have to remember that when you're done editing the collider, you're going to want to actually uncheck that. And now, if I go ahead and play my game, and we boot into the game environment here, you can see over on the edge here, I can still see the edge of the world. But if my character runs over here, you see how I can't jump or get through the wall here. And it's doing exactly what I asked it to. So it's empty, but on the other hand too, it's also blocking the user from being able to interact with anything. The only other important note to make regarding these type of colliders is as you continue on in Unity, they serve a double purpose. You can have collisions as far as scripting is concerned, as far as interactions or taking damage to a player, etc. But also it's important to note regarding the colliders, there is a second option in the component called is trigger. This is going to be able to be used with scripts as far as being able to trigger your elements and have them be interactive. That if the user enters the trigger environment, something can happen. And likewise, if your user exits the trigger environment, something could happen. If you set a box collider to be a trigger, then what will happen is it will no longer be a hard wall or a hard piece as far as a collider is concerned. And instead, the user will be able to run through it and interact with it.